Davy's low energy. We're coming in. Davy is. You coming in swimming? Swinging? Yeah. Swinging. Yeah, so we get it. I always like it when you hear people get stuff wrong and then they and you realise that they haven't realised that they've been using it their whole life. You're like, yeah, I'm coming in swimming. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got a family member that does this, and it's uh, it used to do it. What do they do? It just get like two of them mixed up. So the yeah. one that I always remember is. <laughs> I'm sure we spoke about this before. <laughs> would be he, I'm sure we spoke about most things before at this point. Yeah, but yeah, he'd say not. like to have a look at something. He'd go, "Oh, let's have a butcher's dick," and you're like, it doesn't even make any sense at all. And yeah. the one that's really stuck with me that I, it might even be a thing, bro, is jobs a fish. That means the job's finished. But <laughs> I don't know what where it came from. But I always say like if something if a job's finished or I've done something whatever, I'm like, all right, that's it. Jobs a fish, jobs a fish. and it's like. It literally means nothing. <laughs> I always say um, stuff like, I, I do it around George. I try and get them these things stuck in. Uh, oh, welcome to the podcast, yeah. by the way. Thanks, everyone. everyone. Sorry, we're straight episode in. 84. Thanks. For, this is The Ride Companion. Uh, this is uh, probably what you're used to by now. Yeah, and and, 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 really... and let's just, you know, let's just get some uh, housekeeping out of the way. If you're li- listening, shoot us a little review on iTunes or Spotify. That means a lot. Yeah, do and that, if you're yeah. watching on YouTube, the YouTube algorithm has taken a dislike to the ride companion over the last week or so. So just here's a little like, a little little comment maybe, or a little subscribe, like hit subscribe, unsubscribe, subscribe again. It's a little bit of a hack for us. Let's not do any swearing in this episode. Are you up for that as a challenge? I think we failed. Have we already swore? Well, is, is Dick swearing? No, Dick isn't. Is it not? That's the name, isn't it? Harry. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's fine. All right, no swearing um, episode, yeah? No swearing episode. Can yeah, we have a swear jar? Right, can, can I, yeah, let's do it. yeah, yeah. yeah. Dougie, uh, by the way, um, we need we need all the swearing edited out. Thank you. <laughs> Just leave that with him. I'm going to try, dude. I'm going to try. Right, we're going to do yeah, let's try. professional. Let's try. We are on BBC Radio One episode of the podcast. Yeah, this is a yeah. This is okay. Perfect. Or oh, Red Bull TV. We're on Red Bull TV. Yeah. Okay. This is a really serious one now. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll carry on with the story that's completely going to ruin the previous sentence. Okay. But I try to. I try to get things. I try, I try to make George say things wrong because I, I get great enjoyment. So I, I, this is a, this is an example I'm working on at the minute. Okay, so I'll just do this. Oh, finally, a piece of quiet. Now that's wrong. <laughs> a piece of quiet is wrong. It's but it's finally close, some peace and quiet. Right? But it's close, it's close. And if someone does it enough around you, like she knows I'm doing it, she's she's aware of it. But if I, if I do it enough, it'll go into it'll it'll go into her, her brain, yeah. and she is a um, a vet, so I really enjoy doing it because the thought of her using it at work, and I have mm. so my, one of my previous ones was oh sorry I did that on accident on accident right okay. it's not on accident is re- really quite uh, criminal isn't it I did that on accident and she used it whilst at work and had to correct herself <laughs> really and that was like for me that was like. <laughs> Yes, dude. So if you were going to say, so here's one that I think I get wrong, but I've convinced myself is right. If you were okay. going to say you are, um, how would you put it? You're heading somewhere. So you're heading. Yeah. What do you say? How would you say that? I'm head. I'm heading over there. I'm heading to um, okay. Sheffield today. There you go. So I say headed, not heading. So is that wrong? Or have I heading. convinced myself that that's right? I don't know. No, I think that's no, an Americanism headed. though. I don't know because I'm headed north, or I'm headed to Sheffield. No, no, no. I think I think that's right. I think that's I, I think that's still okay, mm, okay. acceptable. Oh, what if you said like this? So what words. if you said, "Where are you headed tonight?" That's wrong. Where are you headed? Where are you heading? Mm. Yeah, it's tough. Where are you headed is tough uh, for me. But no, it still means. You think uh, it's it's really funny one, isn't it? Language is so like fluid because sometimes uh, like. You can say things almost. You can get stuff wrong almost ironically, and it's normal. Mm. In it, in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. I don't know. It's a funny thing, the old English language, isn't it? I mean, it's it's yeah. it really is a funny old thing. Language in general is fascinating, isn't it? It's just yeah. so like ever changing. It is, and I pick I None pick things up pretty properly. good. I never used to say tough. But that came from you for sure, and I say that all the time. That's like part of my really, yeah. and I've only got a short vocab. Like I don't have a deep vocabulary, 
So if it's in, no. it's like something else has come out. <laughs> you know? like, it's, it, it's very much a one in, one out sort of vocabulary yeah. of mine. You know, I don't remember things like that. And uh, I often, I'll be reading a book and I'll find a word and I'm like, oh, I wonder what that means. And I'll look it up and I'll be like, oh, I'm going to use that a little bit. That's really good. And I'll, yeah, totally forget and never use it again in my well, life. You won't tan it. You won't just like run it relentlessly. I think it's got to go in quick, hasn't it? I think new mm. words, new sayings, you've got to, They've got to come in and then you've got to say it a few times repetitively and then it's yeah. then it's engraved then something else has left the building in my case something else has, something's gone out the back for something to come in at the front That's yeah there you ter- go terrible analogy but it kind of works no i think it does make sense you've only got so much memory haven't you yeah like dunbar's number right you can only no. you can only remember 150 people's names or something which is totally yeah. false because i know loads it just really annoys me that i remember song lyrics Oh, song lyrics yeah, are good. weird, dude, useless. aren't they? Yeah, and you remember them by accident, on accident. But like <laughs> the, uh, it's because it just goes in without you thinking. But also, have you ever done the thing? You don't really use Spotify, do you? But have you ever done no. so on Spotify now? You can you can hit the lyrics button, so you can be listening to the song and the lyrics come up and they like play along. And I do this quite a lot, especially when I'm cooking. I put the lyrics on, and I have a little sing, and it's surprising how many times you totally off <laughs> like totally totally off it's really it's like it's kind of cool because then you discover there's like layers to songs right in a way yeah. so you 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 have like your surface level melody humming along and then you have the deeper you kind of get the gist of what the artist is saying yeah and yeah, then yeah. you really read it and you're like wow that's really well it's different yeah it's not what i thought it was at all so that's been happening yeah, to me yeah. a lot over the last sort of especially the last six months i'd say i've been really using that feature a lot when a new song comes out i like i'll want to listen to the lyrics and see the lyrics and read the lyrics not necessarily so sing the lyrics more... yeah it's probably a bit more powerful isn't it i'm just trying to think of examples of getting it wrong that would be funny and I, and I know that there are mm. so many obvious ones that we could do but i think yeah. my, my brain's not like the Cheryl not- Shania Twain one is really famous, right? I think you kiss your cock at night. That one. Cock at night. Yeah. Is that cock at night? Yeah. yeah. I thought it's car at night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I go. think it's actually cock, but you think it's car. That's. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> okay. Who knows? Oh, I nearly swore hey, that. I had, to, I had to nip it. I had to nip it. I nearly swore. Don't swear. I'm not going to. We did say c- It's not swearing though, is it? Because no, it's a chicken. Male- a male chicken. On on that note, I have actually have chickens now. But we're going. Mate, everywhere. I'll be around soon as well. If you need anything doing, fingers, oh, my drawer will be down we there. Need to get them locked up. <laughs> Why are you tired, Davy? Come on, what have you been up to? Oh wow, great, great segue. Um, why am I tired? Big week last week. It was weird because we recorded the podcast super early, so I had like a whole week of um, being off. You went away, obviously, which, which we'll talk yeah, about. Yeah. Then Emma and I, we went to see a gig in Newcastle. So we took a little trip up north. We went yeah, we went to did. a gig. What, what was the gig? We went to see a band called You, Me at Six, which are kind of like, a, if no one's heard of them, hey, go on Spotify, read the lyrics. Can you sing uh, the most famous song? No, absolutely not. Please. Definitely can't. Please. Um, I really I can't. I really profits could. you went to see. No, I mean, that's... Yeah. So what? Um, they do have a famous. They do have a famous one, though, don't they? You, me, and do you mean six? six? Yeah, probably. Yeah, they've got they've got a few. I think they're a big band. They played in. I'd love for you to hum it to me. Oh, I'm trying to think of it. <laughs> the th- the annoying thing is, so you, me, at six are like one of Emma's favorite bands. So I know oh, the yeah. songs because they're always on in the car. Yeah. So it's one of those things that you can you know like they played a whole set of old bangers and i knew every yeah, single yeah, yeah. one apart from one song which they just released that day and that's called right there for the 90s kids <laughs> there you go there you go he's singing, he's singing. we've got him singing, he's singing. um the energy is up. the energy is okay so yeah so they did the new one but anyway so we went to newcastle and it's really nice because we've not yeah. done anything like that for a, for a minute so we that's that's a good saying for a minute that's one that i don't know if that's a thing or not but i say it um, so we went up to Newcastle, nice. we took a drive up there, went up super early, booked a really nice hotel um, on the water in, in, in Newcastle. Newcastle is one of those cities for me that I go to quite a bit, you, well I used to go quite a bit for work but never really go and be the tourist sort of guy and look around and see what's going on. So yeah, went up there yeah. super early, went out for some lunch, 
um, got ready, went out, and we had had a few drinky poos as well, man. I don't do drinking very much, yeah. but we hit some cocktails up on the way up to the up nice. to the gig, and then we finished the gig. Uh, didn't buy many drinks inside um, the O2 Town Hall, I think it was called, because it was eight pound forty a pint, which is barbaric sure. <laughs> that's really a lot that's really a lot that's for up north maybe it? down yeah. south that's okay but up north we don't play that game so we uh we finished the gig and then we were walking back to the hotel and then we hit a few bars on the way back and then we ended up in an open mic bar which was really good it was like a oh, nice what's on open mic singing or singing comedy? singing 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 nice and everyone in there was amazing like we were it was yeah, yeah really good yeah really re- really good a guy who looked a bit like um uh what's his name the guy was on trial recently. Can't remember, you know. The... Epstein. No, I didn't like Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wasn't really recently. Yeah, really. no, it was the um, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Looks a bit like Johnny Depp. He was like playing guitar. This girl was singing. Like that. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was really good, man. We sat, sat there, had a few drinks. So yeah, I had a few drinky poos. Basically, I don't really drink too often. So the hangover, hangover was pretty rough on Wednesday. Drove back. And then all weekend, I've been fencing. I've uh, been fencing the back garden. Fencing. Mate, what a podcast this is, eh? We're going to talk about fencing for a minute. And just a just a quick shout out and a quick moment of silence for anyone out there who does hard labour like that. That's hard labour, you know. Just a moment of silence. Let's fence- just take, for, for, like, so for the labourers fencing- out there. Yeah. No, I mean, like, yeah. yeah, hard work. So, I mean... I mean, so our fence had fallen down in the wind, so we needed to put a new one up. So I ordered the new one. It's, I went a little bit more robust, quite thick posts, thick panels. And um, basically, he, when they built our house, they built it on what is can only be described as a tip because everything underneath is just house bricks, concrete, plastic no, bags. No, no. Dude, honestly, it's been a rough weekend. I am so Did tired. Did you have the no, hole digger? No, you didn't have that. Didn't have that. Oh, we went man, traditional. That makes life so much better. That does. Yeah. But maybe, but a lot of what we were digging out of the holes to put put the fence post in were, was thick concrete. Yeah. House bricks, plastic bags, armored cable, just junk, you know. And it was it's been yeah, hard work. Tough. So yeah, shout out to anyone out there that does, because you know, you, similar to me, I guess, pretty active guys, right? So pretty active on a scale of not too active, active guys. Pretty active. Couple of Train a lot, outdoors, work out in the gym a lot, yeah. do some lifting of things. But that sort of graft is bloody hard work, man. Like, isn't it? You'll know because you're doing the house renovation right now. But when you just, you yeah. know, it's like carrying bags of postcrete down the garden and all these things that are so awkward and, you know, like the twisting of the, well, being on the pick. And it's, it's, it's a workout. It's a certain type of fitness as well. Mm. I, I've worked on building sites for years and I remember... You know, you, you do you get like a week a week back and you're really beat. Yeah. And it's you think, how can I do this for more than just this one week? I really need a rest now. Mm. And it just gradually becomes your norm. Yeah. The sort of aches, and you must just. It, I don't know what kind of fitness you call it, but like standing up all day and carrying stuff. Yeah. Is it's like a type of fitness. It's not necessarily. It is. Yeah, I don't know. I did it. Well, I worked at uh, I worked at Bike Track for a little bit, which was like you know BMX track building company up here. Um, yeah. And it gets similar, dude. So you you know you're on spade all day, you wheelbarrow all day, whack a yeah. plate all day, building berms, dragging things around, and you do you get used to it. So at the end of the day, you're like, yeah. oh, I can still go out for a ride at night. I'm not annihilated. Whereas these last few days, I've finished at relatively early because it's going dark at five ish, finishing and yeah. just been absolutely wiped out. Yeah. So yeah. and I also got a I got a little infection in my hand, which. You, I don't know if you can see if you're watching. It's only tiny now. It's gone quite a bit. Quite a funny story. What was that like then? So that was from riding into a stick out on a ride. So I, le- I nearly lost my nuts, dude. I forgot to tell you. Or maybe I did tell you. What? You not nearly lost your nuts. So what happened? We were going all over the place here, aren't we? We went out for a ride mm. and was riding along this little single track trail and there was a... a a, a stick coming off a tree which was like um what could it, almost like a, a catapult shape like a y shape yeah thick pretty thick stick anyway i just rode straight into it dude and it's come the inside of my leg just narrowly missed my nutsack and punctured my uh inner thigh I got like a really big bruise there i'll send you a photo after <laughs> a really big bruise it's from last week as well man 
and then so so that that was the bottom fork of the um of the yeah, catapult yeah. shape and then the top came along my knuckle and then into my like above my shoulder and it took it took the skin straight off the top but it didn't look as bad now but that was a week and a bit old but it was so yeah. deep and then i think that got infected so that's been really hard to maneuver the tools around in the garden so i've, I've been icing my hand it's just like was oh. it fa- infections are no joke eh? no they're it's not cool. i was tracking it i had and it's like I had pen the on. pen on, yeah, just tracking it because my finger was going numb and it went really fat. Oh, mate, it's been it's been a rough week, to be honest. Yeah, it's not only if you don't deal with them as well because they go in the bloodstream and it can actually really be yeah. super serious, yeah. can't, can't it? Like this I've one's painful, man. Horror stories of, you can yeah. get like sepsis and stuff, can't you? Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's, it's, this it's, is, it's red, it's really red around it still. I've had it look, not looked at, but I've been putting stuff on, you know, like TCP and trying yeah. to you know, do all that stuff. But yeah, dude, it's been, it's still didn't bend properly and whatnot. But so yeah, anyway, back to that. So yeah, then been doing the fencing. Um, so that's been, been hard graph. It's, it's almost done now, which is good. And then went to a Super Bowl party last night as well. So I've done like the two nice. days graft and then. Is that heavy drinking? No, I don't really do heavy drinking now. I've done it for my, for five, for the fifth, for five years time you know it's usually like five years at a time i do heavy drinking yeah. so the last time was uh freedom ride one i'd say that was yep, good yep. heavy drinking when we did the centurion last heavy drinking that was last heavy Probably drinking. for me as well yeah. yeah and then then this one wasn't too heavy but it was pretty heavy and then last night was just eating tons of junk food like nachos and fries and yeah. onion rings and drinking coke so yeah went to a bar in in the local town it was good it was nice good night good game nice 4 a.m finish though it's tough so some live sports, nothing like it. Yeah, man. Fantastic. Cool. Yeah, it's nice. Love watching some live sports. Yeah, wow. I hope people are still listening because I'm I'm pretty boring when you say it out loud, but that's that's what I've been doing in my life. So that's what we. That's not boring. That's good. Yeah, dude. I, I, home would, improvement. Do you know what I was thinking? Biking. Uh, you're. Yeah, it's good. Mm. That's good. That's good. That's life, dude. Mm. It's good. I was thinking. Um, I was trying to do a segue to live sports because Valparaiso just happened yeah I watched it that's a good one that's I what I was trying it. to do so I was a bit I was I'm all sported out I'm all sported out I'm sorry a, yeah. I'm all sported out but yeah I mean if you can't make the segue just say it that's the best thing to do isn't it yeah, just, well, just that's say sort of, it. yeah that's sort of what I've done yeah, um, I, 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 yeah. I respect it so <laughs> <laughs> I'm all sported out though, man. I think on Sunday, yeah. so Sunday was, uh, which obviously yesterday we recorded on Monday, was wake up, Supercross first thing. Woke up extra early before I knew that my... I haven't watched Supercross. They go, I need to watch So yeah, it, so yeah. Supercross, that's a good two hours out of the day done watching the sport. Yeah. And then it was doing the fencing all day, trying to catch up on a few podcasts that I've been missing out, that I've missed. Be Real on Rogan was really good, by the way. You know, Be Real of Cypress Hill. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, Super Bowl. So yeah, I'm all sported out, man. I did see that Valparaiso was on. I caught a tiny bit of it, um, but on YouTube they were only playing the Spanish version. Don't know if that was just okay, my yeah, algorithm. Yeah. I don't know, but I, all I could see was the Spanish version. But I guess if I'd logged into Red Bull TV, I would have seen the whole thing with Warner and, and etc. But anyway, I'll let you take it from here because I know you want to talk about Valparaiso. So it was yeah. I mean it, yeah. It's just some bike chat, isn't it? Mm. And Valparaiso is a good street race. I've never been there, but it it always it's you you know the one from the stair set. That's what that's where I know Valparaiso yeah. from. It's that famous stair set. Bernard had a huge crash on it. He did. Um, he did. It always it always just seems to be. Uh, it's almost become like the tax co. I feel like it, it, it's that's almost the one that you look out for. Yeah, in Chile. Yeah, but um, it was really cool to see. It, mm. I, I watched it on the Red Bull Red Bull TV, and it had obviously Warner was calling the event. Elliot was um, Elliot Jackson was co-hosting, mm. and then Wynn was on there doing the expert analysis. Fantastic! And it was just it was really cool. It was like I don't know. It was like being back at the World Cups. To be honest, it was it was great to see. Yeah. And street racing, I feel like street racing. If Red Bull jump on it, it has the potential to be this thing that goes out to the masses because it's so relatable. Like everyone knows what steps look like. Everyone can mm. imagine what it's like to ride a bike. And then you kind of put those things together. Like downhill kind of doesn't necessarily mean anything to someone who doesn't ride, I feel like. Yeah. A ski lift, a mountain, a rock drop off. You can't relate to it, can you? No. And what I think what, what Red Bull are really good at is taking these sort of 
more outdoorsy sports and bringing them to a to an environment where people yeah. do relate to. It. I mean, look at what they do with the 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 slope style event in the town. What was that? What's that one? Exactly, district ride, district yeah. ride. Yeah, they did the one in Poland last year, which was again huge, massive outside right, that stadium. Yeah. I feel like it's probably controversial, but no, not controversial, but. What other sports of Red Bull being like the title sponsor of and the broadcaster of, where it's not a deviation of that sport? Does that make I sense? I hear you. Yes. Like they, they, it's sort of ownership over the sport in a different way, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Um, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. I, I mean, just there is something in having a broader reach. So Danny Mac's a great uh, analogy, I guess, mm. for it. You can see people who are really good on bikes in all kinds of edits, but the ones that stick out are when it's a phone box because everyone knows what a phone box looks like and Danny can do his thing on a a phone box. And it's like, I I Mm. feel like street racing, it's interesting seeing it broadcasted in this way. I mean, they've done it previously, but... I guess you're looking at it from a different angle, right? Exactly, yeah. 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 And I guess, like you say, it's one of those questions people had is like, where, what direction do Red Bull go with mountain biking? Yeah. Uh, This is one where they could take this concept of urban downhill and make yeah. it a series or a i guess it is a Let's series go through the reasons. yeah yeah it is a series so it's relatable it's on the streets it's action-packed it's really close racing yeah really really close racing like just the fact that the tracks are, are naturally going to be a tiny bit shorter than a world cup downhill track yeah they are there's there's less time to make up and the, and the, it's basically it's balls to the wall you know it's like you have to go all out if you're racing a street race and you want to win Mm. like there's no there's no kind of relaxing so in that comes crashes which norms want to see people that don't ride that they want to see stuff that they can relate to that's spectacular that's on the edge that's and they want to see crashes yeah so it's like it actually not by design but it's like you can you can imagine how it could really uh, captivate like a non bike audience for sure for sure and it, and yeah so yes yeah, so a big positive there what so what would you say let's just summarize that that positive we've got we've got captivating yeah. was that should we put a captivating word in it it is cap it is isn't it it is yeah. it's relatable relatable so, i think i think that's the first one we start with it's relatable i They're think it's also down. relatable sorry to interrupt you there it's also relatable because people can also obviously relate to the environment which is the street and it's the yeah how big a curb is or how big a, a step, an eight step the stairs is and how hard it would be to hit a handrail going at 40 mile an hour people can yeah you, you can relate to that whereas if you see someone who hasn't ever seen mountain biking they see a step down in the woods and they're like i don't know it doesn't mean, mean anything Valparaiso, there was the step down that was through someone's house out yeah. of a window. I mean, yeah. that instantly, it, the the step down can be half the size and someone watching at home is going to instantly understand it. Whereas, who knows, in a, in a in the woods when you see when you see Brooke triple something up in the middle of a root garden, mm. it doesn't mean as much, does it? No, not at all. It doesn't so mean true. as much as when you see Slavic jump out a window. You're like, bloody hell. So <laughs> I, I, th- I think the fact that it's relatable is the biggest one. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's got close racing. I think naturally it's close racing because the hill is smaller. Mm. And I think it's got thrills and spills because they're racing close to the edge. Totally. And um, I also think from uh, bringing people into the sport, maybe that's relatable. Maybe it's that sort of thing. But, you know, let's say you saw a poster for a, Fort William and you're just a regular Joe and you go right okay, Fort William fuck, that's a long way like it's right up there in the Highlands and I've got to take my walking jacket and i got to take a pack up and i got to hike up a mountain whereas there you're like okay just get a tram into the city and then boom it's right yeah. there it's like on my doorstep sort of thing so yeah easy to exactly. bring people in I bet no, the you're so right so then you get the, the track is lined with people yeah which is I mean dope. Puerto Vallarta they had listed 40,000 people at, I think that was the last race we did so that is a, a giant um, local mm. audience, regardless of the TV stuff. That that means it's a spectacle. Mm. And it's one that you can't really get in a mountain town. You get close to a World Cup, but it's still like an educated audience then, the people lining the track. Whereas this can just be people going about there every day and stopping and seeing something really crazy. Yeah, yeah. Wow, you're right, mate. There's, a, there's some good positives there. We, negatives to urban downhill racing. Is there any negatives that come to the come to your mind 
Um, <clears throat> I think we're going to have to then go back to positives so that okay. it turns it into a shit sandwich, you know? Yeah, let's. I'm just trying to think of any negatives. Oh, I swore! Put a pound in the thing. Put a pound in. <sighs> Ding. Um, I think neg negatives wise, I, I can't actually honestly think of any. I never like it when something, when an event encourages sort of crashes and I don't like the crashes, but that's what makes it so thrilling. People can, a tree is as hard as a wall. Maybe a maybe that's a mm. quite a broad statement and I sound quite stupid saying it, but a tree can be as hard as a wall, yet a wall, you understand how hard a wall is. Yeah. You don't question it. And seeing someone hurtle past a wall or a handrail or something like that, it's something like about the the risk that mm. is really, you know, you, Valparaiso, down those steps. Have you ever seen, you, you saw some some of the drone clips of people yeah, going down yeah, the steps. Yeah, like, yeah. they are flying. And we've got street race specialists now. We've got like people that aren't necessarily, there's all kinds of riders doing them, but there are people that are street race specialists. Slavic's had a glittering four cross career. Yep. Um, and he is now a street race specialist. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he's battling with Pedro Ferreira at most of these. Okay. And he is a street race specialist. And it's so cool to see uh, these guys, like the technique and the power. Like Slavic puts out crazy watts. Mm. And you see him on a sprint section and it is like, it is shocking. I mm. feel so bad for his chain. <laughs> You've seen his legs. Yeah, it's insane. It's dude. insane. It's insane. I gated him once. So, no shit. I uh, didn't. Really. You what, sorry? Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> I, uh, I did racing once. At, uh, did you? Yeah, is it, I don't know. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Bike Live, is it, or something? When they did, yeah, like, yeah. a bike, and they had a four cross, like, a duel outside. I can't remember what, what event nice. it was. There you go. Anyway. There you go. He puts out 2,300 watts, apparently. He, I'll, I'll message him. Someone said that to me. He puts out 2,300 watts in is. an effort. You know, that, that is astronomical. Is that really? is, like, eye-watering. If you tried to put out... That's literally just... You're sat on a turbo, you're pedaling as hard as you can for just like one pedal stroke, just the maximum watts that you can do. Wow. It's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. lot. So anyway, back right Sorry. Back yeah. to the race. So for instance, one of the one of the bad things about street racing is again the crashes are really bad and we've seen in the past, I think Slavic had an awful crash in Valparaiso. Slavic and Ferreira both crashed in practice. Slavic's messed up his ankle, he's got no ligaments down one side and he could barely walk and um Ferreira's broken his wrist I think so he's out for the finals ah. Slavic's racing for the finals it was really exciting to see I think he qualified second to last so he's second to last man down and, and when you saw him at the end of his run walk to the hot seat you can see how much pain he's in and he's a wow. unit you know yeah so yeah. it was kind of one of those like um uh fairy tale stories you know for sure. Yeah. A couple of broken ankle heroes this weekend. Same happened in the Super Bowl, mate. As a twisted ankle, Patrick Mahomes oh, came really? out. Still, they still won the game. Yeah. Still won. Um, and then, um, and then the last man down. I got a negative. Slavic, Can I... So it was wicked. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it might not be a negative, but this is adding a new style of riding to mountain biking. Not a new style, but let's. Okay. I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. So you're a young kid, you see this happening in your hometown of Val, uh, Valparaiso. You get yourself a bike. Where do you practice? You have to practice on the streets, and I don't quite. You, the thing is with mountain biking is if you're going to go out for a bike ride, you're in the middle of the woods. You're not going to get some old lady carrying shopping up the stairs that you're going to try and double. Do you know? Yeah. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I'm just throwing it out there that that is if we're if we're going to start doing that more, then how do people train for it? Because it's really difficult to build a training environment which is urban, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. Oh, I sound like a Ryan nanny, don't I? <laughs> like, oh, it's not very safe, though, is it? <laughs> the same applies God. for sort of like monster trucks as well. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Where do you true. practice, guys? <laughs> Can't go down Morrison's. What are you doing? And cage man? fighting. Practicing monster trucks. <laughs> <laughs> cage fighting. Although maybe people do. You can't just start beating people up, can you, in Argos? <laughs> you know? <laughs> No. Oh, I, think, I don't yeah. know. I just throw it out there. No, I know. What you're hey, saying. here's a, here's, think, like, here's an idea. Here's an idea then. So, do we have anywhere in the UK that we could hold where there could be an urban downhill? Do we? Is there a city or a town which is high enough? To be top Plymouth, to bottom? didn't there? 
I mean, to make it big enough, I don't know. I was talking to I think they used to have one in Scarborough. One in the Isle of Wight. Oh, okay. I think so, because Scarborough's got a castle, and I think it used to start in the... And I'm going back years, dude, when I first discovered mountain biking, there used to be a downhill race in Scarborough, I yeah. think. And that's like, it's I mean, really, it's quite a steep, like, thing, gradient. The South Americans just own it, and there's so many fast South Americans as well. Like, when you look mm. at the top... 10 i know the race is in chile but there are a lot of internationals there and just the yeah. street race specialists it shouldn't really come as a surprise it's a, it's a real thing like they're turning on flat turns i'd mm. love to i'd love to know some of the stuff they do like what do you do to a tire to make it adhere to tarmac and like concrete and like like is there anything you can put on it to make it break down quicker you'd obviously just want yeah. it mega soft super hard Mega yeah. soft um, super compound, hard. super hard pressure. Uh, I know um, Lewis the Cannon Buchanan posted some onboard footage and he put what he'd done to his bike. So he'd gone like super stiff suspension, obviously, he, yeah. but also 40 PSI in, in front and back. Yeah. Which I was like, well, that's basically, you're basically on a road bike. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I just don't who, know who is matey whose rear wheel um, exploded as well. There was that I saw. That's the little bit that I saw. Actually, I turned it on and saw matey boy, like sort of land a little bit skew if on a on a step down and his back wheel just exploded. Yeah. Was it that? Was it that shark fin? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as someone as because obviously we I've built a lot of these in the past and we're gonna build mm. the neck not the next one in this series because that goes to Medellin. But after that goes to Guanajuato, where we'll be building it. And like that feature, <coughs> that shark fin, really sketchy. Mm. Like it's and it's no one it, it's no one's fault, it's probably fine. And I've definitely done it in the past where I've built something, ridden it, and been like, yeah, it's fine. But then race pace, that becomes a really sketchy obstacle. And yeah. I think it was Lewis Buchanan came off on it. Okay. It's like a shark fin takeoff, landing a bit steep and quite far away. And on the shark fin, if you you never quite know what to do on a shark fin, do you? No. Don't know whether to pull off pull it. Pull off it, yeah. They, they quite often ping you off in weird directions, mm. but it's it's hard to measure if you're not looking in the right spot. And mm. yeah, so, I thought actually Slavic on that shark fin. I didn't see that. It looked so cool because he he was trying to avoid G's because his ankle's so bad, and he went right up the top of the shark fin, um, and almost was just. It, it looked like he scrubbed off it, but it looks so cool. Oh, really? Oh, I'll check that out, man. That's cool. I'd like to see yeah, that bit of footage for yeah. sure. So, does, yeah. so with, with the, the one that you're building, have you already got yeah. plans in place or are you, can you like, yes. start? Oh, you have. Okay. But you can take inspiration from watching this and then go, okay, maybe we change well, bits well, or like, are you allowed to do that? These street races, it, when, when we've built them, we've been given where the route is and then we have to make it there's like making it possible and then there's adding obstacles so certain amount of the build is literally just making it so you can ride down it right and that might be that might be because it starts on top of a building and mm. you have to build a drop or they're quite like loose often and then sometimes the organizers will be quite specific like we need a wall ride here and they will have sold that feature off to a sponsor yeah. or something yeah um, <clears throat> this being a red bull one i don't know if that's different but there's a lot of plans in place already, so we just turn up and build it, really. So. Right. Is this the first Red Bull one you've done, then? I mean, other ones have been sponsored by but this Yeah, is, but this is like... This is the first in this Red Bull series, which I, I, I has happened before, but I've never been involved in it before. So, yeah. Mm. It'll be the first one. I'm, I'm really excited. It was. It felt like a World Cup watching it. It was really yeah. cool. And Warner did, it obviously, a terrific job. And Elliot and Wynn having them there it was just a really good show the whole mm. thing was a great show and you could imagine it as a series and yeah it's cool and I, th I think like we said before this sort of lends itself to red bull and what they're really good at which is creating these spectacles yeah. in different environments to what they're usually done in um did you see the, the skiing one that or ski or snowboard one they've just done which was like a really interesting part uh, like park format it had like trampolines in it and all sorts of stuff. Someone oh, sent wow, it. Wow, really? Yeah, someone sent it just the other day. Actually, let me let me just get the name of it, just so just so I don't butcher it. I can't just say yeah. like the absolute bare bones of it, can I? You know, it's just no. Kinda... They're really good at it. They did that. Oh, Red Bull Play well. Streets. It's called Play Red Bull Street, Play Streets. Yeah, super interesting, dude. They got like from what I, I only clicked on it really briefly. Someone sent it to me, but that's done really well. It's hundred thousand views in three days. Um, and that was like oh, district ride, but skis was it? 
Yes. Almost. I just literally just gone on it now. I just wanted to check. Tim Warwood was the uh, host, friend of the podcast. And it looks like it could be like a head-to-head as well. Yeah, it's cool. It's good. It's similar, actually, thing. So it comes down through a... Um, this this could be interesting to watch, actually. I will t- I'll yeah, pay more attention know. to that. Sorry, Tom, for, who sent it me, and I just clicked on it quickly. Um, yeah, it looks like it comes down through a street, like a city sort of thing. Oh, cool. Basically, street Urban racing. Urban skiing. Yeah, 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 basically, yeah, but with loads of random features in it. So, yeah, I think this is what, dude, from a marketing sp- perspective as well. It's, I don't know, I don't want to go on, out on a limb and say it, but it's it's better than, than the World Cup in a weird way. It's more of a spectacle. It's more of a better. is street racing better than a World Cup. I don't know, mate. Right? It's not. I mean, for it's me, not, it has to survive it alongside be. it. Yeah, but I I get what you're saying. I think. I actually think I agree with your statement in terms of reaching a broader audience because it is undoubtedly mm. it, it is better. Yeah, yeah. To reach people that don't know, it it is better. Mm. But how interesting! But and I'd love I know to. If I'm going for a ride, I'm not like get me down some stairs. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. <laughs> yeah. So it's not better no, not in that all. sense. <laughs> Interesting yeah. to think, though, man. Is is there somewhere in the UK where one of these things could be pulled off? Like, that would be super exciting to think about and and just to consider for anyone out there listening. Could let us know in the I'll comment section. What, or... want to, yeah, let let us know. I won a street race in Plymouth. Did you really? <sighs> Plymouth yeah. street race champion, mate. I had no I idea. I, right. I had no idea. I'm so sorry. We've um, we've been underpaying you. <laughs> I won it, mate. Yeah, <laughs> is there any up? Top. Mopped up. Is there any evidence? We got a photo or what? What's no? Probably got some... not. Really? Probably not. I, I'm, I'm, I had a gap on the stairs as well. I felt like oh, I was fucking. Just, um, come on, son. Let's go. Yeah, I felt. I felt. Yeah, it was cool. So I had this gap, and I was like, it's quite a big gap on the stairs, and I think I was the only person doing it. Oh, yeah. oh I did. I, I, anyway, yeah. So and there's a really good one in Sheffield. Shows. You know, we used to do a Howard Street Jewel, which is in the centre of Sheffield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Mm. But yeah, back to me winning um, events. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I did another one in Slovenia. It was cool. It was really? an enduro. Yeah. It was called Black Hole Enduro, um, and it had a street section in it. Okay. And we raced through the streets, and there was like a big like crowd. And I had a gap on that as well. That was funny. I went and did it with Deeks. Sick. I, but my gap was so harsh. I just wanted to have a gap that no one else was doing. <laughs> my gap was so harsh that it snapped my chain <laughs> on landing. So then I didn't win. So oh, it was useless. A useless gap. Useless gap, mate. Yeah, it's a bad one, that, if it's snapping chains. Yeah, I would send you the GoPro footage, but it will be so grainy and old that really? it won't be worth putting in. Long time ago, is it? What are we talking? They just age, don't they? Yeah, like, they do. the, the POV footage just ages bad, man. Yeah. Like, if you look at old footage, it's just unusable. It's just... Yeah, you are right. Yeah, it happens without you even realising it as well, which is the weirdest mm. thing, isn't it? But yeah, you yeah, look at a does. hero, like a GoPro hero, six footage now, and you're like, what were we doing? <laughs> like it's, yeah. And, you know, the new stuff, it's crazy. It's so shaky, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember it was in Slovenia. It was good, though. But yeah, urban racing, fantastic. It's What's the... Um, sort of off-season quite a lot, quite well for me. It's, made, it's got me hyped on sort of the upcoming sports fan yeah. I'm going to be. Yeah, we are going to be sports fans. I'm, I th- I, mate, there's a, I mean, there's some more news coming as well, which is we've got to mention because we've bigged it up for three or four Better episodes good, now. We were meant to have a guest <laughs> again, but the news isn't quite ready to release. So we're not, we can't yeah. do it. We can't talk about it. Do you it. even know it yet? No, I haven't got a clue. Uh, it could be, it, this could be the This could be it. Farts. This, this could, could be, be the, the wettest, wettest of all farts, farts. but man, I, I mean... There, there's Who obviously knows? some news ready to go almost ready Exciting. we are going to talk about it arguably first but we can't do it yet because it's <laughs> they're waiting for one company to sign off on it and it's not done yet it's going to be cool so to have can't. an exclusive isn't it that's going to be cool yeah maybe man. who knows so if anyone sees any massive news you heard it here first but yeah there you go yeah we'll claim any news from now on <laughs> just yeah. any <laughs> it was us yeah we knew we knew about it I have a question for you Davey Please, let me hear it. Can you tell me what this sound is? I think you're going to know. I, I do think you're going to know. All right, you ready? Oh, mate, that sounds like my worst nightmare. That sounds like unoptimized days in the future. It's exactly that. Do you know what that, that, what that represents to me? Mm. 
is I'm not nutritionally complete. No, I don't have I... 75 of those vitamins, nutrients, and probiotics yeah, in my prebiotics. system. Prebiotics. Prebiotics every day. I don't have them. No, no, you're not. You're not. That's probably what your inside sound like a little bit too. They're just rattling around. They're not complete. They're not. It's not a complete nutrition package. Exactly. I've okay. run out of Athletic Greens AG1. All right. Well, what do I do? Thankfully, I just got a little delivery just landed right now. I want to show you a little bit of what you could get if you take advantage of our offer. I'll just give please, you a little. Please, little, please, can little we? Do, let's do unboxing. So here Good. it is. This is what's going to land at the door if you take advantage okay. of the. Uh, Ride companion offer. Okay, so, so that's looking like this. That's an AG1 box. He's opening yep. it up to our audio listeners. Oh, there you go, mate. You're gonna get a bag of Athletic Greens. That's that lasts right. you a month, right? Solid month, mate. Yeah. You're gonna get the shaker bottle, which is lovely, really nice quality. Very useful, yeah. Yep. You're also gonna get in there, which we don't have in this box, a tin, the metal one that you showed, and the lovely little metal spoon. That's Ooh, dope. Lovely, yeah. What else are our listeners going to get if they use our code? Yep, you're going to get a, uh, a year supply years, of vitamin years. D3. It's just in a tincture, super easy to take. And then we're also going to throw in five free travel packs. And these Very are amazing, useful. dude. I've been using these quite a bit, especially been out and about a little bit more recently on the road. I take the travel packs with me. You know, mate, you're in and out of hotels, you're traveling. You're not getting good quality food. You're not getting good quality nutrition. Yeah. You rip the top off this. You pour it in the, either in your shaker or in a glass of water or whatever. There it is. 75 vitamins, minerals, nutri- nu- nutrients, pre and probiotics. Just like that. It takes all of the guesswork out of supplementation. It does, it does. And there's no better way to start your day than with AG1. That's for sure. I've been, I've been taking it every... Well, I've now run out. Yeah. Thankfully, I've got more on the way, but... I've been taking it every single day since and I really like it as part of my daily routine. I, I think as well, dude, we're coming into a new year. It's something we've been discussing in the podcast of like making some new goals and I think one of those goals potentially should be making sure that you're hitting those nutrition goals, right? I think Absolutely. maybe you're going to start biking more. You're going to try the street challenge that we forgot to launch. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, I think just, it's just a good one to kickstart the new year off with, man. Especially after, you know, you come out of Christmas as well. You've been eating terrible food probably eating too much chocolate drinking corona disarano trying to make dr pepper out of two things which obviously don't taste like dr pepper why not make sure that you've got athletic greens in the cupboard and you're going to hit all of those nutrition profiles that you should really be having right Absolutely. health is wealth right what health does, is wealth what does that normally look like normally that that looks like a load of different pills supplements little bottles yeah jangling around in the cupboard you've got to remember to take each one or reorder each one with ag1 you just do one drink in the morning one scoop and you're done for the day done so So, if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine the athletic greens is going to give a free one year supply of vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase go to athleticgreens.com forward slash ride companion that's athleticgreens.com forward slash ride companion. That's right. For your one way stop to optimization. I stumbled on my yeah. words then. I'm not optimized. I, I no, need, you're not. I you need can that tell that one. thing's run out. I'll be honest, you can yeah. tell it's run out. Me, I'm firing. You know what I mean? Exactly. My brain's got all the things it needs to be going. You know, I'm ready to go. I'm going to go for a bike ride after this. And that's all because I've been taking nutritional uh, athletic greens. It's as simple as that. There you go. Athletic greens, AG1. Big thanks. Big up. <laughs> hey, as a bit of um, housekeeping, mm. we, you still got the helmet behind you, and we need to announce a winner. There we do. How much longer do people have to buy raffle tickets? Next week. Should we do it next week? Let's do it next week. Okay. Because I, I I did think about it the other day, and we've obviously had a lot of entries, and it's super exciting and yeah. a cool prize. Yeah, yeah, I'm Let's hyped get, for that. Yeah, ready to get get rid of it. I don't really want to get rid of it from there. I might have, we no, might have to like, do another no, one. We need to get another. Should we get another? We're doing Let's another. Let's do another. We're we'll doing another. Yeah, let do we'll another. Do another. Just, for the, just for studio. Yeah, just for studio. Yeah, we yeah, need yeah. one, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll do another one. We could do like a an open face this time. That could be kind of cool. Just something a little bit different. That could be cool. Yeah, I like the idea of that. Yeah. Mm, although not as. There's something about a full face helmet in it. It's just sick. 
It's cool. A cuzzy full face. Yeah. Is cool. All right, we'll figure it out. We'll do another one. We'll get another helmet. Why not? Um, I was also, you know, we were just talking brief, well, not briefly, a lot about racing coming up. I was just thinking yeah. earlier about any more ideas about supporting um, a specific person throughout the year who finishes, not sorry, not a specific person. I, I, let me take this back. I've, I fumbled then. I've, I've brought something up on my phone and I've fumbled. So let's go back to what I was trying to say, which was supporting a position next year that didn't make it to the main. Yeah, that, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it, and I was just thinking, I was thinking about it today because for some reason, I can't remember why I was thinking about it. And I just double checked the stats. And basically, so what you've got this year for the 2023 Downhill World Championship is you've got top 60 men in elite go uh, going to the semi-final and then the top 30 from that go into the final and then the women's it's yep. the top 15 and then the top 10 in final. So I was thinking we yep. could do 61st and then 16th in the yep. women's and then we split split whatever money we have, however we're going to get money. And then we send them, or we do I'm a like, merch, like, or we do a t-shirt, we do something yeah, where there's... Yeah, there's definitely an idea there. Get them, something there. Have them on as a guest, as a push, or yeah. something, just something. Yeah, that'd be good, wouldn't it? I like the idea, yeah, yeah for sure. We'll get mm. it done. That's a big drink we'll get something done. there. What, what, what are you drinking? Uh, so this is, again, I'm on the uh, Peak Sups uh, Vitamin, you know, ever Effervescent. That's another one oh, okay. that I probably yeah, get yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. I always call it effervescent, but I think it's effervescent. Um, yeah. Multivitamins and uh, that's it. Multivitamins, I think. Yeah, multivitamins. Hey, look, I'll tell you what my when you said I, I when you said effervescence, I thought of effervescence. Ev- essence, ev- yeah, essence, the band, the band, and then it made me think back to tattoo, and I swear all this the is, things you this said, is, all the things you said, yeah. I swear they Coming were sisters making out. I swear they made out. Am I, I making think, it up? Mate, I think they. I think they played on the whole like sister thing that, a bit hard, didn't they? Has that aged? Was it weird then? Oh, I think you're right. I think they were a bit touchy feely in the music now? videos, weren't they? What were they called? Taboo. Hence why Ta- it's taboo. Tattoo. Do you reckon? <laughs> oh, yeah. is it taboo or tattoo? Tattoo. Um, tattoo. Tattoo. Have I, tell I you, made I tell- it up? I tell you what, Rihanna's halftime show is good. I don't know if you've seen it. It's worth watching. And did you know, how much money do you think Rihanna got paid to do the half, halftime show at the Super Bowl? Uh, they weren't sisters. We're safe. Oh. oh God. That, that, would have been, that wouldn't be that cool. You're right, though. <laughs> they, they look super they alike, though, right? Yeah, which is good now. It's good now. I know they're not sisters. It's just, I just thought... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th- I swear they look exactly the same, but I think I'm getting it mixed up mm. with Cheeky Girls. And that's where... Did the cheeky girls ever make out? I don't this know. This is really. De- this is the moment that it completely derailed. We were doing so yeah. well. We we're talking doing about so mountain well. biking. So it's full we- Red Bull feature at the moment, it was, isn't it? Like it was it's full really good. BBC we were doing Radio. So well. No swearing. Maybe that's Where what ruined we? the algorithm last it? last year. It was last week. It was your. I'm not going to say that word, but your Don't picks. Swear. Oh no! No, the people's picks. Hey, I just went on conversation. A I just went on a trip into Sicily, right? <laughs> Segway. <laughs> no, because it's still this <laughs> related. Oh, because you went, went with Deeks. I went on a trip to Sicily. Oh. Do you remember the co- the statue you got for me? Yes. Yeah. So that I hid in Deeks's bag <laughs> before we left, right? Yes, so dude. So I hid it in Deeks's bag. Deeks noticed. Deeks noticed. Okay. And he found it, and he stayed at he stayed at mine the night before we left, and then we had to get up at four in the morning to go to Sicily to yeah. bike park Sicily. Yeah. At four in the morning, I went downstairs. I got I I left my bag down there, and I was like, I remembered because I was like, I've got I've got to hide it in Deeks's bag. He's found it, but he's put it in mine. <laughs> so I found it in mine, and I put it back in his. <laughs> so then we've gone to the airport, and I've been think I'm thinking. I've got it in his now. Yeah. And so as we're going through, there's this weird, this weird sort of like, there's a weird energy between me and him. We're going through, we're going through, um, 
security. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, like, so to, to people who don't know, Davey, it, it, it was on our podcast. It was after I, I remember why it was. did a story about the statue. That's right. About the, about the Great Dane statue. Yeah. And I made a joke about if I started up a statue company. It's not really a joke. You can't count it as a joke. It's just I said, yeah. <laughs> why don't I make a statue company? You make good money on them. They're very expensive. I'd mm. probably end up doing giant cocks. That's what I said. You ordered me a giant cock. Yeah. Well, so that's, this is where this cock giant in some from. people's estimation yeah, is small tiny. No, it's yeah. Small <laughs> no, it's tiny. Yeah. So then I'm. So, so, okay. So fast forward now. We're in an airport. We're going through security. I'm looking at Deeks thinking, you've got a cock in your back. <laughs> Deeks is looking at me. I think Deeks is looking at me thinking, you've got a cock in your bag. Yeah. Deeks has found it, though, which I didn't realise. Right. He hasn't put it in my bag, though. Oh. He's put it in Josh's bag, <laughs> who is filming the trip. Josh Harvey. So then we, So then he's gone over to me and he's gone, you think it's in my bag, don't you? And I've, I'm like... I can't work out whether he thinks I think it's in his bag from the first time. <laughs> Do you know so what I mean? Good, yeah. So, so it's completely lost. Like, uh, like neither of us know what to say. We're both just like, Who's I don't know fuck? if we both think it's in each other's bags and it's not in each other's bag. And he's like, it's in Josh's and Josh is getting, uh, <laughs> getting searched. <laughs> they actually searched the bag that it wasn't in, but I thought it was so funny. Oh, that's I class. should tell you because you got that for me a long time ago and I've been meaning to put it in someone's bag. Yeah, great. That's exactly what it's for. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm, I, I'm glad I haven't that's brought it home as well. And uh, what? Uh, where? I mean, that wouldn't be funny because I'd just literally drive it home. <laughs> you know? But where? Where is the? where is the penis statue now? Is it still international or is it back on home territory? This or might be it? the first time he knows wh- where it is, though. It's a- actually a ratio who runs Bike Park Sicily, <laughs> who is actually a lawyer. By tra- <laughs> In his briefcase. <laughs> it is, on the outside pocket where he keeps his charger. <laughs> <laughs> left it with him in the airport <laughs> nice love it nice dude nice little thank you gift Dave so oh mate the best so, thank yeah. you gift so talk about Sicily dude I don't know much Quite. about Sicily I don't know much, I don't know anything about Bike Park Sicily so what's uh, what was the trip like what's it like uh, how's Ben how's the trip it was great it was, it's been a while since I've been away with Deeks uh, Josh I've met once before I think but he's uh, a super good guy so we, we had a great Obviously, it's always a good dynamic. When I'm going away with Deeks, Josh only added to it. He's a super funny guy. And he's... On these trips, you've got to be ready for anything because you don't mm. know what you're going to get. Mm. We've been approached by Bike Park Sicily to go out there and uh, ride the bike park. And you you just don't know. You're under someone else's... You know, the whole time, you have no choice on where you're going, what you're doing. It's really? Wicked. So it's, all, it's, it. it's literally... It's like, you just get here, we'll take care of the rest. Is that kind of how it works? Is that fair to say? Yeah. Truly, I I was a Tintin fan growing up. And on a lot of these trips, I think of myself, this isn't something I share, but I think of myself as mountain biking Tintin. Yeah. Oh, please, someone draw that. Yeah. And, and, oh. I, and, on, and this trip was the most Tintin I've ever felt. <laughs> I'm going to fast forward to the, the coolest moment of the trip for me. Oh, wait, just pause one sec. Yeah, yeah. Why Tintin? I, don't, I didn't watch Tintin as a kid. He had a little sh** dog. That's all I remember. It won't, make, it won't mean snowy. Not sh**. All right, sh**. Okay, snowy. Pound in the jar, please. I'll put one in. Oh, sh**. Yeah, um, pound in the jar. So, one, one. Tintin, basically, it was just like... Something about Tintin cartoons was obvious, but it was really satisfying to watch. I love Tintin. I... I um, was in, I lived in Brussels until I was three, so Tintin was like everywhere. And oh I used wow! To have the, the books, yeah. So I've still got a load of Tintin books, mm. and I just I don't know whether that's why I like it, but I just like it anyway. And then I liked the cartoon remake with Tintin with an American accent when I was younger mm. as well. Okay. Basically, the reason I like Tintin is it's very easy to understand. Mm. Let's so for instance, let's say I'm going to do this. This is good, and it's going to this. I'm going to double up my story with a Tintin example. Okay. Let's say our intrepid explorer and Snowy, the Deaconator, is uh, they're on a boat. They're on a boat going across wild ocean, right? Yeah. It's pitch black at night. They look up into the sky. Mm. They can see a volcanic eruption, 
That's right, they're going to none other than Stromboli, the world's most active volcano. It's 12 oh, wow. o'clock at night, they've been on the boat for five hours. They can see it up in the clouds, the eruption. It's literally going off in front of them. Unbelievable. Is the, the sound? Pulls up. <laughs> Not at this point. Doo, doo, doo. They pull up to an empty port. It literally is like a, it's like a ferry. You walk out through where the cars are coming out, except mm. there's no cars. Because this island's tiny, it's Stromboli. The only cars on there are Piaggio apes and <laughs> golf buggies as well, but Piaggio apes for the purpose of this story. Mm. So it is a really small, crazy small island. I think there's 300 people live there during the winter. Oh, wow. And it's the winter, let me tell you. Mm. So our intrepid explorer, Tintin, walks up the ramp. He ends up going down these dark streets following a small Sicilian man. The Sicilian man takes him up to the only restaurant on the entire island. Not only the only restaurant that's open, it's the only restaurant... No. Not only the only restaurant that's open, it's the only restaurant full stop. He walks into the restaurant, he orders the local delicacy, whatever it is. He looks across, across the table. There's two men look r rather strange. They're wearing uh, official-looking government outfits. This is, this, this is really tin-tinny stuff. And this really happened as well? This did really happen. I've, I'm, I'm drawing it out a bit too much, aren't I? No, it's I'm great. I'm in. I'm in. Like, in, in. Are you in? Are you in? Okay, like, I'll go I'm back in, to the story. In. Tintin looks across to the other table. There's one guy. He's, he's bald-headed. He's got big, bushy, black eyebrows. He looks quite sinister. He's got a government logo on him. What could he be? Tintin asks himself. <laughs> no, Tintin asks Snowy <laughs> next to him. <laughs> anyway, right, so this really happened. It's literally yeah, yeah, yeah. at 12 o'clock at night. We're on a table. We, we look over there. There's two volcanologists. No. Yeah. Volcanologists. And they're, and they're Sicilian, or are they... Sicilian volcanologists. Not, yeah. Or Italian wow. volcanologists. So they work for the government doing volcano things. Volcanoes wow. need to be monitored the whole time. That takes equipment. Obviously, the craters are always very hard to get to so mm. all the equipment has to be looked after and like it's a matter of like safety you know yeah 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 those are, are so they can spot patterns or anything mate wow. anyway dude to me that is like the coolest shit that's and a cool thing in it mm. i didn't think i was okay I, I didn't think i was that interested in volcanoes i'll be honest i've been down a few on my bike and they range from being really good to just boulder fields mm. for biking they're not necessarily all good and so I, I, was, I was excited about this one because it was active and because we'd seen it on the way in and I'd heard about it. Mm. But I wasn't like mind blown. And since I've become obsessed because it was such an amazing experience and because right. we hiked up that next morning, Tintin. Yeah. God, that's confusing if I keep going between the two. But yeah, we that, hiked up good, with the volcanologists. We talked to them. They no. Up at six in the morning, we hiked up with them. So... Obviously, you know me because you went to the Formula One thing with yeah. me. I'm a yeah. punisher. I ask yeah. a lot of questions. I'm, I'm, I am, in fact, very annoying. I thought, nah, so, you know what? You weren't that bad at the Red Bull thing. Was I didn't not, think so. I didn't think I so, man. Annoying. Okay. All I just right. find it fascinating because, you know, like I feel like my time with these people is like limited. So I want to find out more. Yeah. I want to find out more, dude. It's so interesting. The world is so interesting. And these people have like specialized in one thing the most minute you know this tiny little like yeah subsector of science just the earth earth's asshole like, really isn't it it's the earth's asshole isn't it yeah it's just it letting is, out some gas right. and this and this everyone's got to breathe particular asshole had wind so anyway we climbed up to the top it was amazing we got to the very top and we're literally above the crater and you can hear like wow. do you do you have when there's a storm on you know sorry can i can i interrupt i've got a few questions please, as, we, as we're please, progressing please, through the story shoot, with dude, tintin yeah, and I've, snowy I've, I've lost it haven't i yeah I've no no it. no so you've met the volcanologist in the restaurant your plan the next day isn't to walk up the volcano or is it to go up the volcano it is but we don't know the way so you've you've got chatting to the vulcan volcanologists they know the way they know the way they are the path finders they, they carve the path of the volcano so you said can we just meet you at a certain rendezvous point snowy and tintin and then you're gonna just go with them 
I'm going to tell you the full story, all right? Yeah, the real story. Yeah, you're going to get the real story now. I wasn't going to do the real story, but this is the real story. I don't know if I should say it. You pay them? No. They said, no one's allowed up the volcano. <laughs> and we were like... <laughs> all right. We were like... Well, we, we did... It was all in Italian. This was our guide. We were like, why can't we go? Why not? And, it, and they're like, look, there's also, there's no... No one's there to stop you. You know, it's just a, oh, right. it's just a massive hill with a crater on top, but no mm. one's allowed up it. So we, we're we volcanologists. We can't be seen to be showing you the way. Mm. Or, so th- they were actually, they completely kept their part of the bargain. They they had nothing to do with us. They they said, look, we're going up at this time. If you follow us, then you'll know the way, but we can't be walking with you. So that's what actually wow. happened. And this is an important That's part better. of the story. This is important. An important part is more Tintiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more Tintiny because we're creeping around. You're shadowing. Um, just shadowing volcanologists. More, even more. Yeah, it gets even more Tintiny after that. Mm. It gets even more Tintiny. You didn't think it could. Mm. It gets more. <laughs> so anyway, we've got we got to the crater. It was actually horrific. The the hike was it's, it's a thousand meters high, which is nothing really in terms of mountains. It's not really a big one. How long? You know, a thousand. Bought oh, wise. We we were out for a long time. Oh. Not one of us bought water. <laughs> okay. And we didn't have any food. Fantastic. I can hear I can almost hear people listening to the podcast screaming. Yeah. You always idiot. prepare for the worst, blah blah blah. Yeah, but yeah. The, but the thing is we had we had summited a volcano that the the day before that was eight hundred <clears> meters <throat> and we'd gone and looked at the gas and uh, you know, we'd gone up a path and it'd been actually very manageable we had done that it was within sight it felt easy there's just diagonal path we saw where we were going it was easy yeah this was one of the hardest thousand meter hikes i've done carrying a bike so steep the ground whoa, whoa, whoa. moving the time carrying a bike that weren't in any of story <laughs> well tintin's yeah oh, we're carrying bikes yeah all right so where tintin goes he always takes his bike obviously well yeah? we, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the tintin of mountain biking dude. and you are there on a biking trip <laughs> yeah I guess I just so, didn't think you'd take your bike but yeah okay alright well I wish I hadn't but anyway we'll get more <laughs> more, to, more to that later oh, took the it was e-bike. a really hard hike <laughs> it was really really hard the volcanologists were carrying car batteries up there for this recording no. yeah wow and when you get to the top so we, we we got to the top I didn't I hadn't I don't think I'd really realised that the volcano makes so much noise mm. And you sit up there, you're above the crater, the ground is warm, and it sounds like thunder. It sounds like a jet engine and then a thunder strike. Wow. And lava goes higher than us. One of the most I'm 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 sending you a clip now. One of the most amazing experiences it was. And I could have actually sat up there for hours yeah. on this warm dirt looking at this thing that no one has control over. It's just doing it, it in it. Yeah, and it, it's that feeling of, sort of <clears throat> in, insignificance without sounding too cliched. It is. You look at yeah. a, a rough ocean, you look at a tornado, you see... Helpless. Yeah, you just realise like, how pathetic you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we were up there watching that. It was amazing. Um, looked at these concrete things. They're explosion shelters. They're, they're shaped like uh, a 90-degree radius. They're just, they've lead lined for heat, I think. Like a, like a shelters. war, like a, what do you call it? Bunker, almost. Yes, yeah, like half a bunker facing the crater. So you see them dotted around. I think they're for the volcanologists to get to their equipment to work on. When there's a big eruption, they run to wow. it and then the molten rock comes down. Mm. The gas is very dangerous, I think. Anyway, we had this long trek down. You can't really ride any of it. It's, it's just massive boulders it's not you know there's not rideable and then there's really really not rideable this was not yeah. rideable um, <laughs> none of us have eaten or drank we get to we get to the bottom and I, I, I want I want to talk about this first because I think this would be a good clip have a look at what have a look at how Stromboli erupted uh, in December so I'm going to te- I'm going to send you a video now I want you to watch it because it is, it is absolutely. I had no idea that this that this thing was quite this unpredictable. And have this you where are you sending it? 
So I'm sending it right now to your WhatsApp. Is okay. that cool? Yeah, cool. Yeah, let me open it. Yeah. So... Oh, here he is. Okay, what... This oh, volcano okay. that we're sat up there, and we're... And I sort of... I took a bit of um, comfort, because when you hear it go off, it's terrifying. I took a bit mm. of comfort seeing those bus shelters, concrete bus shelters at the top, because I was like, God, if things get hairy, we can at least go and just huddle up, and we're safe. Yeah. Have a look at that eruption. All right, so this is a one minute long video. So if I press play now, it's going to be okay, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to press play I mean, right now. You don't now. need to see all of it. It happens very quickly. <laughs> I mean, for you to know what I, what would happen to me happens very quickly. Wow, yeah. Oh, look. Holy. Fuck. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, that that's cool, isn't it? I wonder why those people were filming it. I guess it must show signs like early of before it does that. I don't. So you know I what I mean? Asked, like, how, why I were they filming the that exactly? Yeah, of course you did. Tintin what? in the restaurant asked what the volcanologist this. <laughs> that, Whoa! Look how the, high it goes, dude. Fuck. I mean, the crazy thing about it was That's we cool. were above. We were above the crater, and you could see the the eruptions happen. And you could see the power in which molten rock was being blown out, like eye level with us. So that's a hundred feet above. Yeah. You could see how fast it was moving, how much power, how yeah. much air or gas or heat is coming out of it. And it's just like, it's like looking at the back of a jet engine. It's literally like firing it out at a pace that you can't even almost comprehend these bits of uh, lava. Yeah. It was absolutely crazy. But Wow. Yeah, I asked them, and there's no way of telling. Earthquakes are the only way that they can. What? Well, so it'll sure shudder first and then go. Earthquakes tend so, to happen. Earthquakes are tectonic plates moving against each other. Yeah. And I think that the molten rock and the pressure is built built up heat from tectonic movement. So That's are we think. all on a plate? No. Uh, volcanic molten lava or whatever it is like is the whole earth is like everything is everything in the core that do you think or is it just these pockets where it is and then you have the earthquake above it uh, the, not the earthquake the volcano above it i honestly don't know much about volcanoes davy is, please davy get your stopwatch ready it's time for this week's lunch and learn let's go here we go and for those who haven't done lunch and learn before this is when we set the stopwatch to 10 minutes, 23 seconds, and we try and learn as much as we can in 10 minutes, 23 seconds about volcanoes. Go. Right, we're off. So, we're off. volcanic we're eruptions. Off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go straight in. I'm going to go okay. straight in. A, vol a volcano is an opening or rupture on the Earth's surface that allows magma, magma, brackets, hot liquid and semi-liquid rock, volcanic ash and gases to escape. They are generally found where tectonic plates come together or separate, but they can also occur in the middle of plates due to volcanic hotspots. A volcanic eruption is when lava and gas is released from a volcano, sometimes explosively. The most dangerous type of eruption is called a glowing avalanche, which is when freshly erupted magma flows down the sides <sighs> of a volcano. They can travel quickly and reach temperatures of up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. Other hazards include ashfall and lahars, mud or debris flows. Volcanoes often cause population displacement and food shortages. Yeah. So I think what that, that kind of answers your question a little bit in that it only happens along these plate Te fault lines plates where plates fault meet. Lines. Yeah. Have you got anything that you want to that, that uh, looked up? Yeah, one second. I, well, I, I put what is a volcano for kids. And uh, this is what I got. I got 17 facts. Volcanoes are often found at meeting points of tectonic plates, which we just discovered, right? Yep. Volcanoes can also occur over mantle pl mantle plumes. They're hot, super hot areas of rock inside the earth. Right. Okay. Approximately 350 million people live within danger range of an active volcano. That means that around 1 in 20 people live in an area at risk of volcanic activity. Wow. Okay. Yeah, These are good, actually. These are good kids. You always go National Geographic kids. Volcanoes are classified as active, dormant, or extinct. This refers to the amount of volcanic act activity. Means there's regular activity, dormant. Means there's been recent activity, but the volcano is currently quiet 
and extinct means it's been so long since the last eruption that it's unlikely to ever erupt again. Okay, volcanoes can be a variety of shapes. These geographical wonders come in a vari various shapes and sizes, but there are two main types. Composite volcanoes, which are cone-shaped, like the traditional ones, right? Yeah. With steep slopes, and shield volcanoes, which are wide with gentle slopes. Okay. Okay, this is a good one. Magma and lava are two different things. Magma is the name given to hot liquid rock inside a volcano, once it leaves the volcano, it's known as lava. Right. That makes Volcanoes sense to me. don't just occur on land. Now, this is the f***ing weirdest thing. They can be found on the ocean floor and under ice caps. Wow. Nuts, isn't it? Yeah. So I just had a look at tectonic plates, and I've found a list of tectonic plates. Should we go over that? Because it gives us an idea oh, of where sort of all this volcanic activity is, doesn't it? Um, there's the African plate. Uh, that's a major tectonic plate underlying Africa, west of the East African Rift. <coughs> there's the Antarctic plate. Okay. Uh, there's the Eurasian plate, which is tectonic plate, which includes most of the continent of Eurasia. That's a band one, Indo-Australian plate. That's by the fusion of <coughs> Indian and Australian plates. Australian plate and Indian plate. North American plate. The Pacific okay. Plate and the South American Plate. They're also Don't they minor think plates. also um, Yellowstone, the National yeah, Park, is volcanic, right? Yeah. right? It's due yeah. something, isn't it? Yeah I, yeah, I have heard that. Ready to go. Um, this is a good so, fact, Ollie. Let me just interrupt you really on, quickly. Please, please. The, the loud, loudest sound in recorded history was made by a volcano called Krakatau, found in Southeast Asia. When Krakatau erupted in 1883, it released 200 megatrons of energy. That's the equivalent of 15,000 nuclear bombs. No way. <laughs> wow, dude. That's dope. Imagine I mean, hearing these that. These things are just here. <clears throat> like, like, do you know what struck me when I was on Stromboli was just like the fact that it's always going. It's just going the whole time. Like, mm. nothing, it doesn't stop. It, every... Every five minutes, there's now. something firing out of it. It's happening now, as we speak. Exactly. Yeah. It's just that—that that to me is so bizarre. Yeah. Um, I, do you know? I just checked the most active volcanoes um, because I—I I sort of felt like I dropped the fact that Stromboli was the most active volcano in the world, and then I kind of thought, you know, when you go to a new town and they're like, "This is the best coffee in town," <laughs> and then you go past another place and it says the yeah, best yeah, coffee yeah. in town. Yeah. Too, yeah. <laughs> But it actually has Stromboli listed as the most active in Europe. Um, wow. And Etna. I mean, Etna is Sicily, you know? Mm. Etna is massive as well, and you see it when you fly in. So, Did you see that yeah, one? I, Did you go that was, one? Yeah, I've, I've ridden down that one before. We had um, we had too much snow. so it, But Etna is really, really giant. You can see it when you fly in. It's mental. Wow. Really, really big, yeah. But, this right, is a good else? fact. Go it's on. not just humans that make use of volcanoes. It's birds too. Malio birds bury their eggs deep in the sand or soil near volcanoes to keep them warm. There you go. Fried egg. That is amazing. That is amazing. <coughs> the smell of sulfur is really shocking as soon as you're near any, any of that. It's just egg. It's so Is gnarly. it? Yeah, it just stinks of egg. Like, yeah. so I want to know how much... How much... Uh, what was it called when it's underground? Lava? No, magma is in a so, volcano. Like how? Like how much is there? Because it must just keep coming. Like where's it coming from? Also, how did it first light? I don't know. That's a question for another day. <clears throat> you know, how did it no, become it's just hot? Heat. So, so that it, that that's important. So it's friction between the plates, and the plates are constantly moving. So. All it is what... is liquid rock. That's all rock is. And there's a, good, <coughs> there's a good good explanation here, actually, I've just found. Okay. If you try to blow... Okay, so if you try to blow bubbles in a cooking oil through a straw, the bubbles can escape quite easily because the co co cooking oil is runny. If you try to blow bubbles in jam or peanut butter, you'd find it very difficult because the jam and peanut butter are very sticky. They wouldn't move much at all if you tried to pour them out of a jar. It's the same with volcanoes. When magma rises towards the surface, gas bubbles start to form. Whether or not they can escape as the mag magma is rising affects how explosive the eruption will be. 
um, where magma is runny like cooking oil and doesn't have much bubbly gas mixed in it, such as places like Hawaii. Then we see lots of slow moving lava flows and shield volcanoes. L lava is what we call magma when it reaches the surface. Um, so that, that is interesting. So the explosive ones are the magma that's the, the magma that's, that's being forced through like rock. <coughs> Is that what you get from that? So it's like right. the jam and the cooking oil from yeah. the jam or whatever. That yeah. makes sense yeah. to me. So that's why it's like... Pressurised. So, so I guess it's two plates rubbing together, two plates mm -hmm. rubbing together to make liquid molten rock. That rises because it's at such an insane temperature and it has to go somewhere and that's what volcanoes are. Is that good? I think that's a great like explanation, to be honest. I think that How sounds much? absolutely pack bang on. Krakatoa, I thought you were about to say there. The no, I wasn't going to say Krakatoa, but yeah. All right, then. Don't, you, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, it says here, can magma ever run out? If you want to know if the Earth will ever run out of magma, a short answer to this is not in any... <laughs> this is written awfully, awfully, or I can't read. Not in the near future, but yes, eventually, if the Earth continues to cool down, it could run out of magma. Magma. Crazy. That's another thing I've always got wrong. I've always called it Magna. And it's not. It's an M, not an N. <coughs> right, how much time we got? I'm just looking up cross-section of a volcano. One minute 50. Be... Yeah, I reckon we got this. Okay, yeah, you I'm can get it in. At a cross-section of a volcano definitely looks like it's aimed at children, which is correct Perfect for me. So we have the crust. We have this sill. The sill looks like a collection of magma at, sort of at the base of the volcano. I guess that's where you have like hot springs and stuff like that. Okay. There's then a magma chamber, which is kind of, you can see where all of the hot magma is trying to rise up through the volcano. Because basically the volcano is just a pile of, it's just a pile of uh, dried up magma, isn't it? The whole thing is made out of rock and ash that was once Was molten. once, <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Good yeah. yeah, that's good. So it's doing that. Um, it's bubbling, bubbling. Yeah, it goes up the conduit pipe and ends up at the crater. The weird thing is, what I was what I was thinking was that you've got this thing that's sort of al almost constantly trying to heal because it's it's like a it's fucking horrible, but it's like a scab, isn't it? So all the magma is like drying and like turning uh, into rock, yeah, and yeah. then that's what the explosions are. They're firing, and then up. it just like Some like a of... pop spot, and it just goes yeah. boom, yeah. Oh. crazy things though um, and, and it, yeah I don't know how much time we've got left I don't makes us realise we are literally on a spinning red hot rock hurtling through space it's got little bum holes coming out of it every yeah. you know just releasing a bit as a gas and energy and stuff yeah. and it says it also says that there's volcanoes on other planets that they can see too so you know most of the planets have got volcanoes on as well no way that's a good fact to end on isn't it we've got 10 fantastic seconds left fantastic fact to end on <clears throat> yeah I appreciate that man I really didn't know much about volcanoes so thank Me you neither. Bite Part Sicily for sending Ollie and Snowy out there and coming back with knowledge on volcanoes and that's a lunch and learn dude and that's a fuck oh. no we're not saying it that's a flipping lunch and learn <laughs> that was good that was a good lunch and learn wasn't it yeah well, I'm going to continue my Tintin and Snowy story. I'm sorry, I haven't got to the oh, end. Oh, boy, it ended. <laughs> Let's keep going. That was just a, a break. Weary, a weary, <laughs> a weary, tired Tintin with a dry mouth returns. To the and a shitty hill. dog. <laughs> and his shitty dog is very angry Pound. and also sorry. weary, also tired, another quid. Um... So me and Deeks and Josh return to the bottom. We're so thirsty hungry tired it's been really hard we've literally been like bushwhacking down parts of it there's been landslides we've had to cr climb across crevasses and it's, it's just been a like like really difficult uh, it's mountaineering basically yeah it's really With hard a bike. and we weren't and we weren't prepared yeah mm. so we got to the bottom we're really tired we have to pack our bikes up we've got another ferry to catch it's literally just like ferry here ferry there you're just traveling the whole time we get to the port and just like that, the police turn up. Wow. We've been is, reported. This is a twist in the story, isn't it? We've been reported. So I can't speak Italian. No. De Snowy slash Deeks, I don't think he's that good at Italian either. Josh, no. I don't think he has. Well, is Oi in uh, Italian? 
<laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> um, so basically, we're having a conversation with a police officer who can't speak English. He shouldn't have to. He's on Stromboli in Italy. He doesn't need to. Mm. Shouldn't have to. So it's just not going anywhere. Our tour, our um, Orazio, our bike, the owner of Bike Park Sicily, has to go and translate. It gets quite heated quite quickly. To me, all Italian looks quite heated. It yeah, looks aggressive. like they're arguing non- non-stop. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so they're holding the boat for us. The police aren't letting us on the boat. They want identification. We have to provide it after a really long, drawn-out sort of argument. Um, and we've all been fined 500 euros each. We had to go to the police station on the mainland. Again, how Tintin is it? And then we get to the mainland. We have, have to really? find the police station through all the streets. We go in there. They're writing up reports. We've got this long bit of paper in Italian that explains what's happened and how we've violated. What's the charge? Going up the thing? Being on the, on the volcano. It was out of bounds. But there were no signs. So, so there was no real way of knowing. We had been told, but we thought it was only to a certain height or whatever. So right. it was like... It was... So it sounds... A... No, I'm not going to say it. So who who do you think threw who do you think threw you under the bus? Was it volcanologists? No, they were sound as a pound. They were, and they were brilliant, and they were also sucker free. They didn't do anything wrong. We followed no. them up when they didn't. They said they said to us they can't take us up. Um, you who know, do you they, think they it was? were completely uh, on the. I did the translation thing on my criminal record, and it said that there were two viewings: one at eight hundred meters, one at four hundred meters. So someone's reported us from the house. I think it's just a small island, busy people, not a lot going on. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But it's interesting, isn't it? What an adventure, yeah. man. What an adventure. There you go. Worth it? Worth 500 notes or not? A hundred percent. The experience of being at the top of a volcano. And mm. just, uh, I can't <clears> tell you how cool it was. The ground awesome. was warm. I was watching explosions going up in front of me. It was like nothing yeah. I've ever seen. And I'll... I'll Send you the clip and we can put it in here because it is like... Please, we'll send it, yeah. Mind-blowing to me anyway. It was really one that I'll always remember for sure. That's awesome. Good effort, yeah. dude. And um, and I love the energy in the story. I love the Tintin references. It's <laughs> no... <laughs> it was pathetic, wasn't it? It was, it was just, great. Oh, what can you do? What, um, and the rest of the trip? Rest just of the trip was... that. Okay, so we had a we had a lot of weather difficulties, I'm going to be honest. But the rest of the trip was amazing. I've been to... Yeah. Um, Sicily before ridden Etna anywhere with volcanic dirt you can rest assured there's going to be some good if if people ride mountain bikes there it's going to be good because the dirt is unreal it's like mm. um, if it's in its if it's in its ash form it's it's really good because it packs up and it means you can actually turn on it you know in sand okay. it's very difficult to do that but volcanic dirt sort of holds together it's right. also very rich so plants so and could, stuff grow yeah, on it really well grow something yeah which means low <clears throat> so it uh, whatever you do you, you know you, you can't go wrong basically on a volcanic island it's always very good riding yeah. if there's riding if so yeah. uh, we were staying in bike park sicily which was wicked it was just like it's like a small farm with an uplift service and a load of different tracks um in fact good uh scene on sicily might even have good scene in sicily yeah yeah, yeah. There, there is I went there years ago with Bren for right. an MBUK article it was called uh, Snow to Sand and we and we descended Etna right. I didn't go up to the crater but I went up to Snow we rode through Snow wow. went down through all the volcanic hills and then ended up on the beach and like yeah it's, it is really good riding it is amazing riding and it's a super interesting um, island with loads of history uh, mm. the mafia ele- ele- element is really interesting as well what's yeah. still present now yep yeah, there's uh, there's uh, I, 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 I don't know but I think there's a fair amount still goes on they're just renowned for it so there's a lot of history so there's a lot of interesting stories and mm. yeah it was just amazing and, and a really beautiful island I actually nice. have <clears throat> I actually do have a code if our listeners want to go to Bike Park Sicily <laughs> I do he gave it to me. Can we can we do a free ad? <laughs> of course. Of course we can. I mean, I think it's is funny that, is a code. Allowed? Am I just... Uh, <laughs> is it allowed? <laughs> is it allowed? Well, I want it to be allowed, yeah. So there's a, oh, a, a discounted you. rate for a three-day package. And honestly, if you can get there and get 
you, you know, if you can give up at yeah. three days and then do travel either either side, it, you'd you'd have a great time and there's loads of riding to be done and you couldn't okay. be in a better location. You can ride off your doorstep, so it's it's a really fun summer getaway, I would say. Beautiful uh, three day package to Sicily. Yeah, three day package to Sicily for the ride companion uh, listeners. Hmm. Four hundred and ten quid. Well, that's that's right, a it? minimum of three people. Accom- accommodation to be shared. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner included. That covers transport and includes guiding. It's really that's not bad. Four hundred notes, is it? It's all right, mate. Yeah. And uh, you I, need to use you... the code Job Jobelo. Jobelo. We're gonna put the. <laughs> that's um Josh, Ben, and Ollie. He's put Orazio's <laughs> put together a code for us. Jobello. All right, and I got we'll it. Put it. We'll put it up below. We'll put but... a code there, so so people can what book that online. They got like an online website That's you could right. I'd probably, literally I'd just head to instagram it's not right. a massive operation put a code stage. in instagram you're dealing with the <laughs> boss orazio uh capone he's gonna sort you out and uh that's the code if you want to get the discounted rate there's also a one week package hey i tell you what talk to the boss talk to the boss talk to capone yeah slide in the dms and um I'm speak to the guys over there at buy it past Sicily. it's like guess, honestly man sometimes you do need a little bit of motivation you know People are, you know, people love um, purchasing experiences these days, right? They want to go away. They want to do something different. They want to go somewhere. They want to like go to where they've never been before. They want to go see a volcano, five hundred quid. So here's yep. your opportunity. You know, four hundred and ten quid. You got your three nights there. You got your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Good food. What are we saying? Good food. Amazing, unreal food. Unreal food. Unreal food. I've got to admit, we 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 had a lot of. They're um, throwing in the poor, unreal food. We had a lot of poor weather. When mm. there's not much riding to be done. Your boy over here, he, yeah, he eats eating. like a bit of a trash can. He eats a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of rich, amazing food in Italy, and they really like to share it with you. And they like um, wine. So you good wine there. Very good wine there. Mm. I don't drink wine personally, but it's very good wine there. Uh, it's a massive percentage of the world's wine is Sicilian. Who knew? But arancini is. It's sort of. I ate, put it this way: in seven days. I ate a lot more than seven arancini balls. Okay. I ate uh, a lot okay. of arancini, and I think I yeah I'm on sort of detox at the minute. We're just having salads. We're we're going for long okay. walks and hitting the gym hard. I'm back. Yeah. I need yeah. to lose some weight yeah. basically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tintin's got an extra tin on him. Yeah. Tintin. Tin. Yeah. Tin. He looks more tun, like a cat. Tonton. Tun. It's yeah. more tonton right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Than tin, exactly. Tin. Exactly. Okay. So four hundred and ten quid. That's your uh, that's your deal. Uh, that's the deal. And the, I love I love it. And I the code Jabello. Okay, sp- speak to the people because we don't know what the code does at this stage. <laughs> what no, does the code don't. do? But I've sent you. I've sent you the code. I, I have no idea. But look, okay, that's the that's flight, what it's flights. Flights like. are good. How long are we taking to get there, mate? If we're going from flights London, are good. what are we thinking? It's cheap. They're cheap flights. They're it's it's probably three hours. I think it is three hours. But they're cheap. Sounds flights like a good price. And, um, yeah, absolutely. That's a good price. That's a good a price, great trip that. away. And the Tintin Adventure starts right here, dude. Mm. The Tintin Adventure starts here. We don't even know where you put the code and we're telling you to do it, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's all like a Tintin Adventure and you might find yourself up a volcano. Don't bring your bike. Um, <laughs> stick to the path. <laughs> yeah, book a seven-day trip, have three there and do some other stuff around it. You've Eight got yourself two. a dream vacay right there, eh? There you go. We should come up with some other vacay ideas. We have... <laughs> We're just waiting. We're waiting. Like the news. We're waiting. There's things happening, but we're waiting. Should we do some list of questions and get the hell out of here? Because I am... Let's do it, dude. I'm on my ass over it. I need to get some arancini balls, yeah. <laughs> I really, enjoy, I really enjoyed... Uh, big thanks to Bike Park Sicily. Big thanks Fucking to hell. you, David, for on. listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to me. <laughs> a big thanks to Volcanoes. Shout out to Volcanoes. Um, shout out to arancini balls. I think I'm done now. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Should we get him on the phone? Uh, <laughs> my, my... <laughs> no, it's a discount, dude. I'm trying to hook the companionship up. I'm in, mate. I'm in. I'm hooked. Okay. All right. Let's do some listener questions, shall we? I'm not logged in. You're gonna have to do it all. Sorry, Don. Oh, for God's sake! It just comes uh... with offer codes. And doesn't bring doesn't bring anything to the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. You ready? We got it. I'm ready, dude. I'm ready. Let's just have okay, a. Now. Okay. Durf MTB. I've never been riding out of the abroad. 
is the UK actually up there as an MTB country? So I'm guessing Durf MTB isn't from the UK and he's asking if he should come to the UK riding. I mean, you know? Hey, look, it depends. Does lava fly out of volcanoes? Of course you should come to the UK riding anyway. Yeah. I'm just trying to peep out your boys. Dude, this... Oh, he's got a clicked turn down on his Instagram. Yeah. yeah. So he wants trails. Do you ride it looks like it. Wow. It looks like it. I just can't get onto his got account. Some good trails. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I I think we covered this in our bike park, bike parks of England segment. Yeah. But that is the reality of riding in the UK is that you're gonna have to you're gonna have to warrant a week long trip and you're probably gonna have to do a lot of miles on the road to get these legal spots in. Mm. If you don't do that, you're gonna have to rely on one of those GPS apps. I actually have no idea if there is like English riding tourist companies, people that take trips around the UK. I, I actually have no idea. Do you? No. I have no idea if there's <laughs> London MTB experience. <laughs> I have absolutely no clue. And if they have any codes, I wasn't listening at all. Oh, were you not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out this guy's story <laughs> I think what he actually meant was he's from the UK he's never been riding abroad so is the UK actually as good as what he thinks it is oh okay well, <laughs> so that's it's a bit not different. The other way. <laughs> imagine I would have uh, been waiting at the airport for quite some time <laughs> wouldn't I <laughs> you know, what's his name <laughs> UK's really good. Yeah, UK's, UK's really shit. good. You've only Move got to on. look at the depth of talent. Yeah, and if you, there's good yeah. biking. Good if you've sales. not been riding abroad, then use the code Jabello and go to a bike park. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> Next question, dude. Um, them. Wow. <laughs> oh no, it's Mark. Bike park and trail centres, or off-piste, unsanctioned trails. What do you guys prefer to ride? I'm a go personally. There's a little bit of both, obviously, because days at a bike park are fun, like the Christmas ride. Great day out, great people. But I do personally, I'm more of an off-piece kind of guy, more of an un unsanctioned, although I hate that terminology. Um, I'm more of a raw dog. I like to be out there in the wilderness. and um, Lad. Yeah, a little lad. So, yeah, that's that's me personally. But yeah. obviously, we'd, you know... It's I think it's everything. interesting, isn't it? Because it's like, what's the definition of like, like mountain biking itself? It's not like a uh, bike park. It's a real Disneyland version of it, isn't it? A bike park is mm. even the biggest bike park in the world. Isn't doesn't feel like mountain biking to me at times. Okay. Even Whistler Bike Park feels a little bit Disneyland to me at times. I right. really. It's like just so far away from what it yeah. normally is on a day-to-day -day basis dude yeah. and no and especially the urban free ride uh, urban urban racing that is not yeah. what you expect mountain biking to be like no exactly and i feel like we maybe move away we, as time goes on as mountain biking gets more popular we move away from what like you know you you sort of end up becoming like a, a, a dinosaur like i think of mountain biking as just like only unsanctioned and quiet yeah. and away from crowds of people and you pedal to the top i actually think that that bike parks are sort of like this disneyland hybrid version of it you, you know what i mean yeah I and do. it's not that i don't enjoy them i really enjoy them but it's like yeah i i would i would say always i would take the kind of natural version of it I bet it's how people thought about Supercross when that first started to kick off. And people were like, yeah, I don't, this is, it should be out in the desert, just going, yeah. you know, up and down. And now you're in a stadium. Yeah. Bit of both. Mix it up. Um, James Cross, best kind of helmet for dirt jumping? It's interesting, actually. Dirt jumping, I feel like, is really changing at the moment. Like, you see more and is more it? people wearing, like, well, you see, it, it's way more normal to wear, like, a, a normal mountain bike half face at the trails with a Ooh, peak. Really? I wonder if that's because people are doing double dipping more often. Do you think that, or is it just it's just become more? I don't know. I, I wouldn't say I've ever seen a a pro do it. Does that make sense? Well, okay, well, okay. Im 
within mountain biking, we have uh, Sam Reynolds, for instance, regularly Ooh, yeah. at the dirt jumps. He won't wear a skate helmet anymore. So Why? that's one example in mountain biking. We do now have a new version, though. And some of the raddest riders are doing this. So we have, for instance, Mike Hucker-Clark. He's wearing mm. a mountain bike helmet riding BMX now. Is he? Type is in his um, Instagram. Yeah, this is, a, this is a, interesting because this is a, a, new, a new thing. This there's is interesting. There's also, at the core of core, let me find yeah. it. We've got, I think it's Tommy Dugan. No, he's not even wearing a helmet. I was wrong. Um, Oof, naughty. Cliff so Hooker... Reynolds. Okay, the video I've just watched there, Hook has got a, your standard piss pot on. But in the... Oh, no. Yeah, he's got, like, the half yeah. face with the peak. Right, so now we've got who I'd consider one of the realest trail oh, yeah. BMX riders out there. Clint Reynolds, unreal rider. Um, he's now wearing a mountain bike helmet. So this is one of the mm. steesiest trail guys around, and he's wearing a mountain bike helmet now. Has Hooker left Red Bull? Is that yes. a thing? Is that okay? That's common knowledge. Oh yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on that as a look? I mean, I think just uh, I just be safe because it's it's Clint Reynolds. Like I yeah. don't care. It's Clint Reynolds. He could. It 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 looks still alien to me, but then that guy's style eclipses any sort of alien thing. But because mm. like this is as this is a proper trail BMX style. Yeah, and he's running the... That, that's a half face he's got on there. Yeah, it's the, they tend to be, by the looks of things, like those ear helmets. Yeah, ear the helmets, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, over ear. Usually by, what, usually by Fox. Like, they seem to do... I don't know if Troy Lee do one yet. Probably got one coming out, no doubt. But, yeah. They are, They do seem to get... I guess, yeah. That That is like a one helmet for everything sort of vibe, which is kind of cool. Yeah. It's really it's a it's a really great question because it's really a thing that I've been thinking about lately whether I should wear my A3 at the trails but it just um I, I'm just out of habit I have my dirt jump yeah things are like my they're just always the same you just does don't it, change them do you you just keep using the does same does it get in the way at all like for anything I'm just trying I'd to think I, for a backflip but then I you know do maybe backflips with a peak so yeah. Like a steep takeoff when you're just looking up it. If there's peaks there, that'd be a bit weird. Yeah, bit it's true. I've actually never done it on dirt jumps. Yeah. Like proper steep dirt jumps, I've never done it. So I have no idea. Maybe you'll see me in a year's time in my A3 riding mm. trails, or maybe I'll just continue to ride my old cannonball helmet that I've got on at the minute. That uh, that new helmet you just they just released trailer looks really nice. Is Very that a new cool, is it? that a new A th- is it a new A three? It's what called it? the no, it's not an A three at all. It's okay. a um, it, it's at a lower price point. It's called Flowline. Oh, oh, okay, right. So it's called Flowline. Okay, I got confused what it was actually called. Yeah, it's called Flowline. <clears throat> it's, um, so how do they? Uh, let me see. Anyway, yeah, I haven't got the I haven't got the description here of it, but it looks really cool. Mm. Nice. Um, what else we got? Um, <clears throat> do you know what urban frubing is? That's from on on your head one urban frubing. Never heard of it. Hopefully, it's someone eating frubs in an alleyway. I know what it is. Oh, do I not need to look? Up to you, mate. Mm. I mean, I feel like it's not something that. Yeah, we'll move on. Are we moving on? Yeah. I feel like it's something that happened, it used to happen to like... Um, I like to be PG these days. Do you? Yeah. Are we being PG? For this episode. This is the one for the kids, let's, you know? Let's not, yeah, let's not do this episode. We've done such a nice... Mm. Yeah, we're not doing the urban frubing. I mean, it's something that before... <laughs> you know, it's something that before, um, before it had this name... It, it used to happen to basketball players. I'm sure loads of old basketball players have been uh, done with the frubing. I oh, know because it's eating, isn't it? I don't even want to look. Let's move on. We're moving on. Next, per- next question. At Deaconator1. <laughs> right, I have a it. friend who suffers from Hooker's neck due to his massive fridge head. <laughs> Any tips? <laughs> Cheers, Deeks. Much appreciated. Yeah, 
Deeks likes to say I have a fridge head. Uh, also, he says I have a safe head, a generator head, a cow head. Um, I do have a big head. Do you know, I, I noticed actually today I have a big head. I have very small ears as well, and I couldn't put mm. a pencil behind an ear. It kept falling out. <laughs> you have to use one of those from Ikea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I noticed it only today. I was like, my ears are small, actually, in other parts. My ears are small, yeah. Uh, is that, are we, oh, it don't matter. We can't talk about the other thing with Deeks, can we? Because you, surely no, you have the best burn to. ever. We're not going to. No. We're just going to move on seamlessly. And here we go. Seven, Carl Brooks, seven. Davey, whose signatures are on the sax boxes behind you? There they are. This is a little, I'm doing my own plug now. Are they signed? <laughs> Good, you should. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, so they are signed, and it's probably about time that we gave a pair of these away. So we've got yeah. a pair of sacks signed by Greg Minar, a pair nice. of sacks signed by Jackson Goldstone. Are you gonna sign? Are you gonna give these exact ones away? Yeah, and then we got a pair signed by um, Loza. Yes, amazing. So we'll just give one pair away. Um, so just comment below on YouTube. Head to YouTube if you want to win a pair of sacks signed by one of the people, riders, athletes of the Santa Cruz Syndicate. Can be kind of okay. cool. Yeah. So well, they use cool. these. Th these were meant to be for a giveaway, but they never got used. So um, just comment below whose whose pants do you want? Do you like uh, Loza pants, Greg pants, or Jackson pants? And then we'll pick one next episode. So what there you go. say it's someone's pants it makes you think that they're used doesn't they're not used soil. i promise i mean they brilliant. might be they might Cash be back. But... brilliant yeah exactly yeah they're not they're not used so yeah comment below if you want to win a pair of signed pants sack Weird pants all, all all of which include the ballpark pouch and they've been signed by your favorite riders and prevent you your nuts from getting wrecked by trees apparently too because i think if i was hanging loose i would have maybe lost a bit of testicle yeah, you don't want that, do you? Don't want no. none of that. Ain't about no. that life. Um, okay. Um, let's just do Maybe. two more. Yeah, I need we to didn't get, get that many in. because I'm, I'm we sorry, put it I up late because I forgot about it. Yeah. Um, let's log me back in because it's way better when I can do one and you can do one, isn't it? It puts less pressure on you. Yeah. Matt Simo, three fifty. Is Ollie the new voice of World Cup downhill? And was the boat race thing just a screen test? Imagine, I, I get so many, so many uh, messages. It's like people have worked it out. I'm, I'm afraid I'm not. Mm. I, I don't have any. I like voice. I, I like the idea of doing voiceover. I didn't mean, like commentary is a completely different thing in my head. Like so difficult to do it live, like like oh, Rob God. does. And it reminded me watching that street race how how difficult it is and to keep it flowing and like yeah. him and Elliot are really good together. It, it struck me how good they were. They can like make things light-hearted and they can turn silences. But I, mm. I feel like I pay attention to it and because I know Rob really well. I, I feel like I can tell what he's like getting at, you know, or like when yeah. he's trying to move on or whatever. Yeah. And um, they're, they're so good at it. You, it's seamless. They're like yeah. real pros. And it's not something I feel... It's tough to do I'd that. Be able to do. Yeah, it's a, a really learned skill, I feel like. Definitely. I think I'd, I'd be keen... I mean, it's a different subject actually, but I would be. I, I'm looking forward to hopefully doing some like race companion stuff where yeah, we can sit around, and we yeah. can get some people in, and do that because I think that will be fun. But Great not fun. commentating where you've got people listening for like insights and like that's not no. what it is. Pressure, but just hanging imagine. out watching the race with people and having a few drinks like that sounds like a, yeah. that'd be really cool to do. But I mean, that's the difference um, again from like, like these three different things. Is that yeah. you've got commentary podcasting and voiceover they're mm. worlds apart those three things they're very yeah. very different and like like podcasting for me is just like we're having a conversation aren't we and yeah that's it it feels very it's really yes sort of You've, you're, well you learned about volcanoes didn't you it was sort of <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's really natural. I, I mean, it wants to be at this well, point, doesn't it? it? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> In a few years, yeah, that's for sure. Um, okay, last one. And a yes. great one to end on. Ricky Graham. Pushy parents at downhill races. Good for the sport or cringe? Now, this actually is a perfect one because I had someone who we will leave unknown reach out. 
and wanted us to talk about or at least just you know have a think and put out to the people what do people think or what do you think ollie of people setting up instagram for their kids to show biking i think it's really bad i think it's really not really bad i think it's just the way it's done sometimes can be really cringe it's just like what are you doing it for almost you know they're documenting the kid riding around the pump track on a frog bike like it's just a bit silly but the other side of it i can see that it's maybe a place where you can store all the memories i mean i don't have any memories from biking as a kid really yeah. because we didn't have the opportunity to do it but it's it's more when parents and stuff are posting like look at little tommy nearly did a gap jump like just i don't know it seems a bit cringe to me and pushy parents in general i don't like I've been around that a lot as a youth especially in the circles i used to run in in the moto stuff a lot of pushy parents in that sport because it was expensive a lot of people were up against it financially probably they seemed to have this idea that if the kid won a british championship or whatever it could be that life was just going to miraculously change and be better but yeah, I think the whole pushy parent thing is an interesting one. That's for sure. Like it's a probably a longer conversation than what we've got now. But yeah, do you have any thoughts on it initially? To 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 to, to I do. Yeah. Do you know? I I think it's mega interesting. So like, Deegan, for instance. Yeah, great one. I don't, I don't reckon he's a pushy parent. I don't reckon nope. he is. I reckon the 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 pushiness. Oh, it sounds bad because it sounds like I'm being an arsehole, and I don't mean to be. The pushiness, I think, comes from when you're trying to live something that you didn't do through your kid. And I think that is a shame. I agree. I do, however. And that's what a lot of it is, especially in the amateur aspect of things. But but with Deegan, it's a different thing. He's more of an advisor, right? That's an example of it not. So I don't believe he would have been pushy. I believe he would have known what was important that, like, his kids obviously supremely talented and he like you know all the youtube stuff is even if he helps it's not being pushy it's like helping him with his career but then where do you like it becomes difficult what i do think is people people feel like they if someone's going to make it they're going to make it it's what i kind of think to a certain extent if you're that Mm. good you're going to make it and it doesn't matter if you get a slow burn of followers over all these years or if you get to a certain age, everyone notices you get, you get picked up and you blow up. You're still going to end up blowing up. So and the follower thing doesn't matter either, just as a side no. note. You can still make it without even having it. Yeah. If you've Ish. got it, you've got it. And, then like, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and like, for me, someone's childhood is that, like a, a kid's childhood is way more important. Climbing trees. Mm. But but then you don't get champions like Serena Venus Williams, do you? So I I have no answers. But push push your parents is tough yeah. for me. Push your parents is tough. Fun. I'm not. I'm never going to be on on side of a. Push I think we probably all and everyone listening to this, if you've been at any sort of race or anything, have seen where it's not looking fun for the child. Like you know, they've seen that. They've seen the parent getting angry at them. I'm selling your bike after this. Or I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it a lot. You know, and I was really lucky growing up that my dad or mum was not like that at all he couldn't give a shit what was going on my dad at any event there was like a couple of times where it was like you know we've we've driven a long way you know what i mean this is you've spent a lot of money you know can we at least go out there and do something yeah. half decent you know what i mean like just come on but um yeah definitely seen the not very nice side where the kids are arguing with the dads at a young age and falling out over stuff which like you said as long as it's fun I think that's the most important thing, isn't it? There's examples of it working, but there's way more examples of it not working. Very good point. Very, very good point. And I think the examples of it working, they become examples of of parents that don't push their children. Mm. So I think that data is just enough to say, don't push your children into something. Let them find it. Let them. T- but yeah. What do I know? What do I, know? Yeah. I don't even comment have below. Time. Let's hear from you. How do you approach it? Let's hear from you. We'd love to, I, yeah, I think a it's parent, a great one. Is it? Shout out to the parents as well. I don't want to just like. Shh, yeah, shout out to parents. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to labourers. Shout out to parents. Shout out to all of our companionship. Shout Volcanoes. out to Volcano. Shout out to Valparaiso, Aaron. Aaron Red Cheney. Bull. Shout Everyone, out to just you, sh- Davey. shout out. Just shout out. 
Shout out to you. Shout out to episode 84 of The Royal Companion. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening. Thanks for putting up with our rubbish. We'll be back next week. We're going to have a guest. Maybe. Possibly. Probably. But maybe. I think think it's safe to say next week we're going to have this guest and we're going to be able to break some news into the mountain bike world. Yeah. Fantastic. (laughs) And if you see it first... You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. I <laughs> hey, enjoy the rest of your week, everyone. Yeah. Peace and love. Like and subscribe. <laughs>